Hi, it's Heather from Strings and Threads. Today we're going to talk about how to put the paracord and toggle fasteners on dice bags. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm still a little raspy, um, but I went to the doctor, I'm COVID negative, but I have the flu. So that's why my voice is a little raspy. So please uh, forgive me. Hopefully you could still understand me. This right here is the power cord. It's just a nice, really sturdy cord that can help keep the bag uh, opening and closing longer. It, it is very good. I got mine on Amazon. I, I don't know of any craft stores in my area that sell them. So I always order it and on uh, Amazon and it's the same with the toggle fastener. Some toggle fasteners will have two smaller openings. Uh, I usually try to get the ones that have the one bigger opening and you can get a pretty good deal on them on Amazon too. You can get a whole huge lot of them for pretty inexpensive. Um, but I have not seen these in any of my local uh, crafting stores. So that's where I end up getting mine. If your crafting stores have them, that's great. Just let me let me know in uh, the comments where you can get yours, if you're able to get yours somewhere other than Amazon. Because I wouldn't mind shopping for better deals. So the way that I usually measure it out... I On my dice bags, I don't usually do all the roll, rows double crochet because it ends up being a little bit holy. And I do have some dice that are a lot, on, that are really small. And I it makes me nervous that the dice can come out. So I usually use a smaller stitch, but then I do one row of double crochets for the paracord to weave in and out of. So I usually just take the power cord and kind of go like this for me to measure out. Now in my patterns, I will usually actually measure out what I cut and put in the pattern, cut a 24 inch strand or however much it measures. But initially this is how I figure it out. Um, I make it a little bit on the longer side to what I want because it gives a little bit of room to weave it in and out of here. But also at the very end, you're gonna end up tying a knot because the ends of these power cords fray, but also because you'll have a toggle fastener. So if you don't have an end, a knot at the end of it, the toggle fastener will just come right off the end. So the knot keeps the toggle fastener in place, but also um, helps the fraying from going up. There's another thing that I do to work with fraying too, and we'll get to that later. So to me, this would be a little bit on the long side. It gives me wiggle room to weave it in and out and put a knot on the end. I'm going to measure that because this is actually going to be a new pattern. It's not completed yet. I will show you guys when it is completed what it is going to be. So this one is... It's about 30 inches. It's a little bit shy of that, but I probably put in the directions 30 inches. So then when I weave it, I don't usually use the end because you can already see how it's fraying. And if you start weaving it in and out, the fraying just gets worse and worse. So I usually bend it like this. And then I get the double crochet row. and just put it in and out excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, of the double crochet row. I'm going to stop talking so at this point I can speed up the video.
Okay, now that I have that through, um, you could see it looks like I actually missed and did two here, but it really doesn't matter once it's all <coughs> tightened, you don't really notice. So I try to make sure the ends are about at the same spot and you just hold on to them and pull them until they're together. The next part is putting the toggle fastener through. So you have to squeeze it. And again, sometimes this could be tricky with the fraying, but you just pull it through the best you can. Okay, so you could see that. But notice if I didn't put a knot on the end, this toggle fastener could come all the way off. So I'm just gonna tie a knot on the end. Okay, and then I cut the part that has been fraying. And then there's two ways that you can prevent this from further fraying. There might be more than two ways, but there's only two ways that I know of. And if you know a better way, let me know. Put it in the comments and I'd be happy to learn another way. One is burning. You can take a fire and burn these ends, but I really don't like to do that. <clears throat> so I just take some glue. You don't have to put it on your finger, but this just to me works out best. And you put glue on the tips and then the glue hardens. Now you do have to let it harden overnight once you do this. But once the glue hardens, these do not fray. I have dice bags that I made in 2013. That's the year that I designed the dragon bag and then had it completed in 2014. But I have dice bags that are from then that I did this to and they have not frayed at all. All right, so now I'm just gonna let this dry overnight. I hope this was helpful to you. Please like, share, and subscribe for more on strings and threads. See my item description, or see in my description uh, how to stay in touch with me through my Facebook page, um, through Instagram, through Etsy, and uh, I have some pattern books up on Amazon if you would like to check them out. Thanks. Have a good day.